Selections from Mr. Punch a Wheel. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Rosie. Selections from Mr. Punch a Wheel, edited by J. A. Hammerton. Page 14. Hints for Biking Beginners. Number 1. Ensure your life and limbs. The former will benefit your relations, the latter yourself. Number 2. Learn on a hired machine. The best plan is to borrow a machine from a friend. It saves hiring. Should the tire become punctured, the brake be broken, the bell cracked, the lamp missing, and the gear out of gear, you will return it as soon as possible, advising your friend to provide himself with a stronger one next time. Number three. Practice on some soft and smooth ground. For example, on a lawn. The one next door for choice. A muddy road, although sufficiently soft, is not recommended. The drawbacks are obvious. Number four. Choose a secluded place for practicing. It may at first sight appear somewhat selfish to deprive your neighbors of a gratuitous performance which would be certain to amuse them. Nevertheless, be firm. Number five. Get someone to hold you on. Engage a friend in an interesting conversation while you mount your bicycle. Do you remember Mr. Winkle's dialogue with Sam Weller when he attempted skating? You can model your conversation on this idea. Friend will support you while you ride and talk. Keep him at it. It will be excellent exercise for him physically and morally. Also economical for you, as otherwise you would have to pay a runner. Number six. Don't bike. Trike. Page 62, Broken on the Wheel. First lesson. Held on by instructor, a tall, muscular young man, thought it was so easy. Cling for dear life to handle, as beginners in horsemanship cling to the reins. Instructor says, I must not. Evidently cannot hold on by my knees. Ask him what I am to hold on by. Nothing, he says. How awful! Feel suspended in the air. That is what I ought to be. At present, am more on ground. Anyway, one foot down. Even when in movement, position of feet uncertain. Go a few yards supported. Muscular instructor, rather hot and tired, but says civilly, You're getting on nicely, sir. At this, get off unexpectedly, and, when I am picked up, reply, Very likely, only my feet were off the pedals all the time. Then rest and watch little children riding easily. One pretty girl. Wonder whether she laughed at me. Probably. Shall have another try. Second lesson. Held on by another instructor who urges me to put more life into it. Hope it won't be the death of me. Work in a manner which even the treadmill, I imagine, could not necessitate, and get the wheel round a few times. Painful wobbling. Instructor says I must pedal more quickly. Can't. Rest a minute. Panting. Awfully hot. Observe little children going round comfortably. Pretty girl here again, looking as fresh and cool as possible. Suddenly manage to ride three yards unsupported, then collapse. But am progressing. Shall come again soon. Third lesson. Endeavor to get on alone. Immediately get off on other side. Nearly upset the pretty girl. Polite self-effacement impossible when one is at the mercy of a mere machine. After a time, manage better. And at least get started and ride alone for short distances. Always tumble off ignominiously, just as I meet the pretty girl. Instructor urges me to break the record. Hope I shan't break my neck. Finally, go all round the ground. Triumph! Pretty girl seems less inclined to laugh. Delightful exercise bicycle riding. Shall come again tomorrow. Fourth lesson. High northeast wind. Hot sun. Regular May weather. Clouds of coal dust from track. Pretty girl not there at all. Start confidently. Endeavor to knock down a wall. Wall does not suffer much. Start again. Faster this time. The pretty girl has just come. We'll show what I can do now. Career over large hole. Bicycle sinks and then takes a mighty leap. Unprepared for this. Am cast into the air. Picked up. Can't stand. Something broken. Doctor will say what. Anyhow, clothes torn, bruised, disheartened. Dare not catch the eye of pretty girl. Carried home. Shall give up bicycle riding. Awful fag and no fun. Page 24. That Bicycle Lamp. The other Sunday afternoon, I rode over on my bicycle to see the Robinsons. They live seven miles away. Tompkins and others were there. People who live in remote country places always seem pleased to see a fellow creature, but Robinson and his wife are unusually hospitable and good-natured. After I had some tea and thought of leaving, a hobnail was discovered in the tire of Tompkins' bicycle. 
he being very athletic was playing croquet a game which requires vast muscular strength however he said that his tires were something quite new and that in one minute one man or even one child could stick one postage stamp or anything of the sort over that puncture and mend it so all the rest of us and the butler principally the butler who is an expert in bicycles went at it vigorously and after we had all worked for nearly an hour the tire was patched up and tompkins having finished his game rode coolly away I was going to do the same, but Robinson wouldn't hear of it. I must stay to dinner. I said I had no lamp for riding home in the dark. He would lend me his. I said I should have to dine in knickerbockers. That didn't matter in the country. So I stayed till 9.30. The next Sunday I rode over again. I started directly after lunch, lest I should seem to have come to dinner, and I gave the butler that lamp directly I arrived. But it was all no good, for I stayed till 10 and had to borrow it again. Bring it back tomorrow morning, said Robinson, and help us with our haymaking again dined in knickerbockers on monday i resolved to be firm i would leave by daylight rode over early after some indifferent haymaking and some excellent lunch i tried to start no good robinson carried me off to a neighbor's tennis party after we returned from that he said i must have some dinner couldn't ride home all those seven miles starving knickerbockers didn't matter again dined there and rode home at ten thirty so i still have robinson's lamp now i want to know how i'm going to get it back to his house if I have it taken by anybody else, he will think I don't care to come, which would be quite a mistake. Have vowed that I will not dine there again except in proper clothes. If I cross his hospitable threshold, even before breakfast, I shall never get away before bedtime. Can't ride seven miles in evening dress before breakfast, even in the country. Besides, whatever clothes I wore, I should never be able to leave by daylight. I should still have his lamp. Can't take a second lamp. Would look like inviting myself to dinner. So would the evening clothes at breakfast. What is to be done? End of Selections from Mr. Punch a Wheel. Recording by Rosie.